Hello and welcome to another episode of A Critic's Journey and uh, today I'm taking a look at a film that genuinely has some history with me as a film reviewer and film journalist. I'm talking about The Wog Boy because uh, this week I sat down to watch The Wog Boy and also Kings of Mykonos as we led into the release of uh, The Wog Boys Forever. Now, this film, as I said, does have a little bit of a history for me um, as a reviewer, because I can clearly remember the day that I went and saw this film. Um, it actually turned into a little bit of a, a Stephen Curry marathon on the day that I saw this film, because I remember really, really clearly that my friend Luke and I were at film school and our morning lecturer didn't turn up to class. And we thought, what are we going to do? Um, we decided to head to the cinemas and watch the two Australian films that came out um, that week. And that was uh, Cut and also The Wog Boy. Now, I don't know whether it's because at that time I was looking at so many different genres of filmmaking at film school. But one of the things that I remember with The Wog Boy was that it was one of the first times I'd watched a comedy film and really fallen in love with it. Um, up until that point, most of you who know, knows me and knows what I've spoken about previously on this podcast is that when I was at high school, I was very much a genre film lover. I loved horror. I loved action. Um, and I kind of got my... Uh, lessons on that there were genres outside of that those genres at film school. It's where I fell in love with uh, with foreign cinema and and drama and things like that. Um, but prior to this date, I don't think there'd really been a comedy that had come out that I'd fallen in love with. Um, so why did the Wog Boy affect me that way? Well, I think the Wog Boy affected me that way because I grew up for most of my childhood in Oakley. Um, so all of my friends growing up pretty much were Greek. Um, I knew Greek families inside and out. Um, I knew how Greek families operated. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that really stood out to me about this film. Because for those of you who haven't seen the film, it centers around um, a character called Steve, played by Nick Giannopoulos, that calls himself the Wog Boy. Um, when he was first growing up, it was uh, the term "wog" was was used to put him down. He adopted that word and took it on board as meaning something cool, um, as a way to get around that. Now, in this film, we we meet Steve. We meet his best friend uh, Frank, who's Italian, played by Vince Colosimo. Uh, Frank's parents run a pizza shop. Um, Steve's parents run a uh, a shoe shop, of which I saw a lot of uh, growing up in Oakley. Now, this is actually a pretty interesting tale with the Wog Boy, and uh, I'll go into a little bit of the, the depths of this story as well. So, in this film, uh, Steve gets outed as basically a doll bludger um, by Darren Hinch on Darren Hinch's show. After he has the unfortunate uh, car accident, um, which involves a, a government minister called Raylene Beaglethorpe, played by Geraldine Turner, and her assistant Celia, played by Lucy Bell. Now, this was actually based on a real case that happened here in Australia. We had a case here in Australia, for those who are listening overseas, that revolved around a family called the Paxton family. Now, basically, the Paxtons were your kind of alternative teenagers who just didn't happen to be working at that time. Um, they were dragged onto a show called uh, A Current Affair and made look like complete doll bludgers by Ray Martin, um, who was the host of the show at that time. Now, what actually happened was A Current Affair at their normal sneaky best um I'm, I'm not a fan of the show you'll get that very quickly by by the way i'm talking right now but basically a current affair went and got these kids jobs that they knew that they would never last in like i said these kids were alternative kids 
They went and got them jobs in, like, the most fanciest places they could ever imagine, knowing full well that the kids would never be able to keep a job there. Um, the aim was to basically set up this family, have them fail, and then poke fun at them, um, and, and get all the, the liberal supporters out there on board talking about how lazy young people were and stuff like that. Um, so what Nick Giannopoulos actually did, uh, with The Wog Boy, um, which he co-wrote with, uh, Chris Anastasides, was they did the same thing with his character as Steve. They had, um, this minister, Raylene, and Darren Hinch labeling him a doll bludger. Um, Steve then ends up working in their department and uncovering some stuff that is going on, um, at that time. There's also other storylines in there as well. But the one thing that really hits you with this film is how comedy orientated it is. It's, it's a great film, um, talking about some of the social issues at that time, but the comedy comes through really well, really so well to the point that even to today, some of my friends and I still quote this film, uh, quite often when we're mucking around and stuff like that. It, it really is a really good comedy. Um, Vince Colosimo and Nick Giannopoulos are, are absolutely fantastic in it. Um, Abby Tucker and, um, Lucy Bell are, are amazing as the, um, the love interests in this film. You've got Stephen Curry playing Nathan, this kind of loser, um, that, um, that works with uh, Steve and Celia, and he's great in that role as well. You've also got these great side characters too. Uh, Dominic, played by uh, John Baresi. Uh, Tony the Yugoslav, played by Kostas Kilius, who... Uh, and even um, even Theo, uh, played by Tony Nikopoulos. Absolutely fantastic comedic characters that are memorable. Um, and that's something that we don't do a lot of here in Australia with... Um, comedy films, and they just create memorable characters, but The Wog Boy certainly did that. I, I go to say that it's very, very close to being the perfect comedy film. Um, if you are if you want to write comedy in Australia, sit down and watch The Wog Boy, because even though the story at some stages people might say lacks, I don't feel it does. I feel that the story is a great social commentary on what was happening at the time, especially the Paxton case. And the comedy works throughout the film. The acting is fantastic, and this is just one of those feel-good films that you can sit down, watch, laugh at, and no matter how many times you watch it, you will laugh at it. So, look, I, I might be biased because I know this film has a lot of personal meaning to me, but I'm going to give it five stars. I really, really love this film. It's one of those films that whenever I'm feeling a bit down or anything like that, I go back to and and watch, and I just absolutely love it. So, if you've never watched The Wog Boy, um, go back and watch it, because I think you'll find it is an absolutely amazing film. <laughs>